you very much, Mr. Lamba, for setting the tone for the summit. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we now proceed to our keynote address, we all know that branding goes way beyond being a graphic element. In fact, it's quite overwhelming if you look at the broad definition of brand. But if your brand is actually catering to your needs of the target audience, then, well, it's time to let your brand speak for itself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our uh, keynote speaker is someone who wears many hats. In fact, he wears it with great passion. He's an ad man, he's an actor, a news TV pundit, and a brand manager. But most importantly, well, he's a founder and the managing partner of Consulage India, which is India's only strategic brand management and marketing consultancy. Ladies and gentlemen, with a warm round of applause, please help me welcome on stage our keynote speaker for the summit, Mr. Suhail Seth. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lamba, people at times, <clears throat> people at times now, 80 now. I haven't been paid enough to thank each individual sponsor, so I'll omit that part. But I will say this soul flower aroma is very good, so whoever's created soul flower should be very happy. We need this in the days of Swachh Bharat or whatever these guys are doing in Delhi. I think it's very important to understand that brands interplay with our lives whether we like it or not. But surprisingly, consumers don't buy brands. Interesting to kick off a branding conference by saying consumers don't buy brands. Consumers ultimately buy benefits. It so happens those benefits get so deeply intertwined, associated, and completely fixated with a certain kind of brand that you begin respecting the brand. The benefits of a Rolex and a Titan are just exactly the same in terms of the time. Both show you, uh, both show you time, both are watch pieces, but the essential difference is that there is a badge value to a Rolex which for some reason hasn't yet caught up with a Titan. So we've got to understand that in the context of brands and brand building, what is it that the future holds for us? My topic purely is how do you build personal brands? Deepak talked about the personal brand in conjunct with the corporate brand. I think there's more riding on personal brands today than has ever ridden in the history of time. We in this country used to respect institutions. We in this country used to respect the value of the establishment. We used to respect the office of a particular establishment or a particular institution. The fact that today you don't talk about the BJP but you talk about brand Modi means we are individualizing brands, a process that had begun way back, say just after independence with the eulogizing of a Mahatma Gandhi. Individual brands are what people relate to. Individualism in a brand, to my mind, is even more critical when that individual is not only inspiring consumers or his own employees, but more importantly, communities and the corporate world. Today, you look up at people like a Ratan Tata. Why? There is obviously the Tata group. But, the, but you look at people like Ratan Tata for the way, not the way they've lived their lives, but the way they've lived their corporate lives equally in the personal domain. And that, to my mind, is very important. So the essential thing that you and I have to remember is we as human beings and personal brands are more important than the corporations we serve. And we are not selfish when we do that. Because companies don't buy employee numbers, they buy people. People are at the heart of everything that happens in this world unless we discover the uh, people on Jupiter, which we will obviously leave Rahul Gandhi to do. But having said that, it's people who drive aspiration. <clears throat> Deepak Glamba didn't quote, you know, a, an unsigned, unsung journalist from The Economist. He quoted Bezos and Kennedy. If you look at the history of the American presidential system, it's people who looked at people and then voted. Look at our own history. 
you will never get rid of and someone was telling me this earlier you will never get rid of the of the eulogizing and rightly so of a Nehru so people brands individual brands are very important but what does individual branding need number one it needs consistency the problem with most of us is we are deeply inconsistent because we are immensely keen to be popular popularity doesn't lie in the wake of great individual brand building because you can never be popular with everyone and Churchill famously said the only person you need to be popular with is your wife in that area I'm even more benefited because a I don't have a wife and be the people I see with wives are in any case not popular with them so it really doesn't matter but it's very important for individual brands to have consistency at their heart the second thing to my mind which is equally critical for an individual brand and, and these are things that are going to help you guys in your careers if they're not already helping you the second thing is clarity of purpose just like consumer brands individual brands to my mind need to have clarity of purpose we easily get swayed by the call of superiority we easily get influenced by superiors we easily want to please anyone who th we think is important but individual branding gets destroyed when you do that you will never win every battle that you fight so there's no point sacrificing every inch of ammunition only for that short-term gratification that doesn't work and I'm seeing more and more individual leaders across the world across sectors are people who have consistency and a very very clear purposeful vision and that vision doesn't have to be rocket science but it needs to be there and I'm seeing more and more individuals who are brands in their own right are not following that and they're getting easily swayed <clears throat> What is the third thing that an individual brand must possess? An individual brand must possess tenacity. Like everything else in life, we are buffeted by strong winds. Either winds of change, winds of depression, winds of delusion, winds of denial, winds of deprivation. And what happens is we then want to take the shortcut. <clears throat> this country, under the last prime minister, in his second term, did just that when individual brands begin to take shortcuts two things happen they lose the confidence of the people they serve and more importantly they lose their own self-esteem there's a very interesting thing said by Salim Khan who sadly now is known as Salman Khan's father but is a great poet and lyricist in his own right I'll say it in Hindi and for the gents who are from nations other than ours I'll translate it in English in Hindi he says and beautifully put he's saying Admi pahariyon ki uchayon se girke zameen pe apne aap ko sambhal sakta hai par agar wohi insaan apni aankhon mein gir gaya to wo kabhi nahi samlega to translate it means a man can fall from the highest peaks of a mountain and perhaps stabilize himself but if he falls in his own self-esteem he never will remain the same and what's very important is for brands and more so individual brands to have that self-esteem and self-esteem is not ego it's not arrogance although I'm a great believer that arrogance is a huge virtue in a country of 1.21 billion people it's not about being obnoxious it's not about you know having contrarian views just for the sake of having contrarian views but individual brands need to have that just like you would look for a distinction between a Dawat and an Amira Rice why would people look at you distinctively as an individual brand if you don't possess that single discriminator that is either alluring inspiring or perhaps deviant and we human beings and you have to study philosophers whether you go into the niches of the world or you go to Andre Malro or you go to even recent times Jiddu Krishnamurti here in India what is at the heart of individuality at the heart of individuality is a purpose in life 
I wrote an article, <clears throat> I do this weekly column in Mumbai Mirror, where I talk about tradition. I talk about renunciation. What did Gautam Buddha do? What did Lord Ram do? What did Sita do? When Sita asks for the earth to crack and says, take me in because, you know, the dolt of my husband doesn't trust me, thinks I've been sleeping around. What does she do? She lays a template for the ultimate sacrifice. It's another matter that she creates male chauvinists out of Indian men by and large. But that's what happens. People remember people who've made a difference to their lives. So the fourth thing that an individual brand must do is make a difference. I'm not saying just get on television. I'm not saying, you know, park your car in the middle and start beating your chest uh, on a busy highway. No. <clears throat> but make small differences. And we've stopped doing that as individuals. We've stopped making a difference because we believe we will swim against the tide. But remember, individual brands always swim against the tide. Otherwise, they won't be remembered. The problem in today's world is that we have become cookie cutters in any which way. In the good old days, at the advent of civilization, you had Adam and Eve, then you went into tribalization, then you became a more evocative, evolved world. And today we are back into tribalization. What's Gmail? It defines you. What's iPhone usage? It defines you. So we've created communities and individuals and human beings. And it's very important for me to do this analogy in order for you to understand what I'm talking about. Human beings, by and large, are very insecure mammals. I won't say animals. We want the comfort of being told that we're doing the right thing. We want the comfort of being told that, yes, you're not doing anything that is controversial. What does controversial mean? You know, I'm told by people in aircraft, uh, in airport lounges and in aircraft saying, oh, you know, you were very controversial. What does controversial mean? Does controversial mean saying the truth? Does controversial mean calling Sharad Pawar a crook? A crook? What does it mean? The fact is, individuals are always threatened by their own insecurities. They're also worried that what if I become unpopular because of what I've said? <clears throat> what if I get into trouble? What if individual brands don't live by the what if? They live by the but why. And that's important. Just like brands in the consumer space, individual brands don't live by the what if, but by the but why. But why shouldn't I say this? Why shouldn't I do this? Why shouldn't I retrain? Why shouldn't I evolve? Why shouldn't I be more empathetic? Why shouldn't compassion be my driving force? And my point is, I'm not the oracle to tell you of all the ailments that afflict it, the, the modern world. But we as individuals have lost the distinctiveness that we need to build. Which brings me to point number five. Search for distinctions and distinctiveness that you can manage. We often aspire for distinctiveness which isn't really our forte. So you'll have a very, very, you know, dumb person trying to spout, uh, let's say, Marx and Engels. Don't. Stay with what you're comfortable. But I can leave you with one thought. It has nothing to do with the Best Brand Summit. I've told young people and old, I was born and raised in Calcutta. I can't remember one week in my entire life, and I'm going to be 52 next May, just for those of you who think I'm much older. I, have, I can't remember a single week in my life where I haven't read six to eight books. And it's not difficult. But the point is, we don't want to challenge the status quo. We don't want to ask questions. And especially in our country, we're a great country of conversation, but a very poor country for absorption. So individual brands are brands that are sponges. They soak in. And we stop doing that. We've stopped doing that in our education system. We've stopped doing that as far as basic scholastic aptitude is concerned. We've stopped doing that as far as challenging the mores of the establishment. So how will you build an individual brand 
<clears throat> if you can't garner the confidence of your own purposefulness, if you can't garner the confidence of your own conviction, if you don't recognize the value of honesty and truth, people say forthrightness. That's what I call a cover product. It's like, you know, selling backpiper playing cards for backpiper whisk. But the reality is, the individual brand is the only brand in today's world that can drive stock markets crazy and that can also demolish stock markets. When Flipkart did a, you know, a spin last week, you didn't get an email which was generic from Flipkart. You got it from the two founders. When you talk about Infosys, you talk about Narayan Murthy. When you talk about the House of Tata, you talk about Ratan Tata. When you talk about the Godris, it's more or less Adi. Even Sam Balsara, who now calls himself Chief Managing Director, is associated because of the kind of person he is. So how does it matter when people tell me, oh, you know, individual brands are not important. They are the most important. When you're hired by a company, you're hired by an individual. When you thank someone, you thank someone individually. We have parents. We don't have, you know, DNA numbers that have produced us. Point number six, and this is a very crucial point. An individual brand must have longevity and relevance. Often we lose both. We lose longevity and we lose relevance. For the simple reason that we don't believe that we have to steer the course. We don't believe that we have to continuously upgrade, retrain, evolve. There's almost a point that individual brands come to where they believe they know it all. We will never be a fulfilled society. So how can we be fulfilled individuals? You will never stop learning. You will never stop understanding the mores of societal change that is afflicting the world today. Would we three years ago have imagined an ISIS? No. Would we have imagined Syria the way it's turned out? No. Would we have even imagined Ebola? And individuals and not companies are better soothsayers. Individuals and not companies are better predictors of what's going to happen. So sometimes it's very important for individual brands to actually crystal ball gaze. Because we are living in a society of human beings and not androids. We are living in a society which is seeing change. Isn't it strange that a country of our size, of our depiction, of our civilization, from 1947 till 1992 didn't ever discuss religion? And today religion, which is supposed to be private, has become public? Why? Why did religion get out of the, of, of the temples and the mosques? Because there were individuals who used and abused religion. This morning, I was shocked to see headlines today at 9 a.m. showing a program by Ravi Shankar. Not the sitarist, but the, but the art of living uh, gentleman. 9 a.m., Gita Gyan, which, by the way, is a great thing, you know, for all the bored uh, men and women. But why would I, at 9 a.m., on a day after Maharashtra and Haryana have gone to the polls, be interested in Gita Gyan? But such is the reality. So, Individuals have had the power to build and have had the power to destroy. It's individuals who've had the power to evolve and the power to regress, which is why it is very important for individual brands to stay with longevity and to continue to be relevant. So how do individual brands remain relevant? To my mind, individual brands remain relevant because they do two things. One is they're on a constant learning curve, which is why it's called learning curve and not a learning full stop. Number two, individual brands recognize that they are interplaying with other realities. In some cases, corporations. In some cases, other individual brands. So it's very important in order to be relevant, you've got to be relatable. How do we make ourselves relatable? We make ourselves relatable only because we understand the impact of what we think and what we do, which is why the individual brand will always be more supreme than a corporate brand that you can either eat or consume or wear. Because the individual brand will always be one step ahead by adding the think quotient to whatever it does. In this case, whatever he or she does. 
So finally, I want to leave you with just a couple of thoughts, and then we can have, I've got about five more minutes, we can do a quick Q&A if the organizers permit. But at, at the, if you examine everything and you pull back and you see where we are today, this will always be a world that will be driven by individuals. I don't see robots taking over in a hurry except in some workshops in Japan. We will always be a world that will be riddled with passion, that will be determined by the flow of events that we create for ourselves. We will be healed by doctors who are individuals. We will be led by leaders who are individuals. We will be destroyed by leaders who are also individuals. We will always remember Hitler in poor light as he should be. We will always remember Gandhi in great light as he should be. We will always worry about the quality of leadership that was given to a country when the country needed it most when we think of a Manmohan Singh. A lot of people will be worried about Brand Modi. Individualism is the biggest threat to community cohesiveness. But then again, there's an India which is aspirational, which a Modi inspires, and rightly so. So if the individual is going to be at the heart of evolution, if the individual is going to be at the heart of change, and if the individual is going to be the driver of tomorrow's world, how can we, in today's India or the world, neglect that individual? And what are we? Our names are given by parents. But what we become is what we become owing to three things. Parental influence, peer pressure or the lack of it, and societal relevance. If we can master these three things, we will remain fortuitous brands. We may not become uh, worthy of being the best individual brand honored by the Economic Times at the Hyatt Regency in Bombay, but we will sleep a good night's sleep. Brands ultimately, as I began by saying, are all about benefits. So when you leave this room this evening, think about just one thing. If someone was to buy or sell you, why would they? And it's not about your academic accomplishments alone. It's about how rounded off you are. It's about the purpose you're driven with. It's about the passion you possess. It's about the forthrightness which is at the pinnacle of your belief system. And above all, it's about the humanism that you endow the world with. And if you can do all of these things, you're as great an individual brand as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Thank you so much. So, if there are any questions? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for questions. You may please raise your hands. We shall pass on the mic to you. First of all, thanks. Uh, this is Sushobhan Das Gupta. I work for Johnson Johnson Medical as the managing director. I can't hear at, at all. Uh, this is Sushobhan Das Gupta. I work as a managing director for Johnson Johnson Medical. First of all, thank you for uh, a great presentation. I'm from Calcutta as well. Mangla uh, Bhutabaro? Absolutely. I think we were in the same school, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry. But I won't uh, talk about the age right now. So uh, <laughs> the, question, the question to you is, I, I do agree in certain circumstances in societies that prevail where an individual brand becomes very powerful. But there are instances where the consumer segment or the consumer mindset is such that the organization is, becomes much more powerful than the brand. And there are examples like you would be able to spell out who's the, the, the personal equity which uh, uh, the Apple owner or the Apple founder has versus a personal equity that a Google founder or a Johnson & Johnson founder or a 3M founder has. I think it, uh, and I, I wouldn't disagree to your comments, but I think it's more towards looking at where the society and where the cult is. So in India, for example, I completely agree that where the personal brand sometimes takes much more precedence than the corporation brand. But in certain other countries or in societies, that's very different. Absolutely. And there's no denying. You know, it's not one size fits all. But when you ma mention Apple and you mention a Steve Jobs, whenever Tim Cook does a conference where he's unveiling a product, who's he most compared to? Steve Jobs. What is, imagine if you were Tim Cook and you were up on a stage in San Francisco presenting the iPhone 6 
You know what you must be thinking? As he walks up and says, shit, again these guys are going to compare me to Steve Jobs. It's going to happen. But is he less of an individual brand? No. He'll reorientate himself. Look at the story, a very interesting story of Infosys. Narayan Murthy, brilliant. But the one edict he passed was that Infosys would always have, in the initial years, succession planning which revolved around the one fact that founders would run the company. And we saw two founders demolished it. Obviously, I can't name names. You know, I'm not that brave. So what do you do? So you respect the individual, and yet there's an, there's an organizational challenge. And then the dilemma is the dilemma of the devil. You don't know what to do. Do you want to save the world, or do you want to continue to inject it with greater evil? That's it. Any further questions? Oh, there's one there. We have a question right there. Across the hall. I'm Samir from Tata Motors. Uh, I have a question on point number four and five that you um, gave us. One was the search for distinctiveness and the uh, single discriminator. Uh, I'm at the very beginning of my career, so my question is, uh, is it a conscious attempt that one has to make towards this or is it that so is it a competitively conscious attempt that I have to make or is it just that it happens because of uh, consistency or tenacity that's a very good question to be honest I don't have the answer I don't think it's something that you can search out and acquire immediately but at the same time I don't think it's so intuitive it's so subconscious that you don't think about it at all see Conviction, purposefulness, and forthrightness are issues of, to my mind, heart and mind. It's the way you're brought up. You know, my brother and I, we were told three things when we were kids, and it wasn't some, you know, Ten Commandment Moses-like speech that my dad gave us. He just said three things. He says, never take a loan for anything. So I've never bought a car or a fridge or anything on EMI. You just stuck with that edict. Number two, He's saying, ne he said, never ever lie, ever. So we've gotten into enough trouble. Third, he says, never say something about someone behind that person's back that you'd be afraid of saying it in their face. Which is why we're happy abusing people on, on news are. Say the same thing on their face. Now, I don't know if those three things would work for you. You might get beaten up. So tomorrow, don't blame me saying, oh, you know, but this guy told me to be forthright. It's about judiciousness. Having said that, the other things to my mind which are, which are in the acquisitory domain are things like scholarship, are things like understanding, are things like compassion. Compassion is not intuitive either. You know, compassion is an acquired uh, uh, area as well. You can be soft-hearted, but the fact of give back at times comes from what society unleashes around you. Today, when you look at individual brand comparisons in the compassion domain or in what I call the give back domain, you're always looking at Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Now look at the transition of Bill Gates as a brand. Innovator, marauder, monopolist, compassionate. He's done it with purposefulness. When he started Microsoft, the world hailed him as this innovator. Then he was this big fish who was looking at small prey. Then he became a monopolist, you know, the destruction. I mean, I don't even want to, to go there, read Isaacson's book on Steve Jobs and, and, the, and the enormously fractured relationship they shared because of control. And now, whenever you talk about Bill and Melinda Gates, you talk about them through the window and prism of compassion. So they've built this enormous brand around themselves. I'm not saying each one of us will become a Bill Gates or a Melinda Gates. All I'm saying is, let us examine, respect, and laud our distinctiveness. Because each one of us can, must have that distinctiveness. Because each one of us is and will remain a brand. So to that end, you will always have these dots that you must, uh, you know, kind of cross. So this is exactly the, the heart of, of what I believe in what I think 
is the way forward for individual brands. Okay? Thank you so much. Done? So thank you so much, sir. But I'm going to request you to please stay back on the stage for just another minute. And may I please invite Mr. Deepak Lamba to please come on stage and present a token of gratitude to Mr. Suhail Seth on behalf of uh, the ET Best Brand Summit 2014. Can we keep that applause going one more time, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you once again, sir.